This plane doesn't exist. It doesn't have the ability to fly beyond Mach 6, nor fly at 135,000 feet, and isn't powered by an incredible pulse wave detonation engine tearing across our sky. After all, according to the US government, this plane isn't real and this video is just a fantasy. But poring over countless dark websites, I've been able to piece together what this plane may be, why it likely exists, and how terrifying the skies above us really are. This is the top secret, supposedly never built, Aurora Black Triangle. At the end of the SR-71 spy plane program in the 90s, the US was left without a new spy plane to operate across the world. The future SR-72 is still decades away, and for the last 30 years, supposedly, the military has flown blind. Or have they? There are many reports of strange triangle aircraft flying high above military airbases and across the world that seem to defy modern aviation physics with abilities to fly faster than anything ever before and seemingly vanish into the clouds. Little is known about this plane, but it is estimated to fly at a top altitude of 135,000 feet and cruising at around 90,000 feet for operations. At these altitudes, the aircraft would have an incredible speed, easily pushing Mach 6 and tearing across the sky. To reach this pace, it would either have a ramjet or an early scramjet like the proposed SR-72, or it would have a very unique propulsion called the pulse wave detonation engine. Basically, this crazy idea uses small detonations of fuel to push the aircraft forwards, constantly chain reacting until the plane reaches the required speed. This will result in a very unique contrail of a ring of donuts daisy chaining behind the aircraft, something that I'll get to in a moment. It is very different from normal engines that we have on aircraft today. You see, all regular jet engines and most rocket engines operate on something called deflagration of fuel, that is the rapid but subsonic combustion of fuel. The pulse detonation engine, however, operates on the supersonic detonation of fuel. Because the combustion takes place so rapidly, the charge of a fuel and air mix does not have time to expand during this process, so it takes place under almost constant volume. Constant volume combustion is therefore more efficient than open cycle designs like gas turbines, which leads to a greater fuel efficiency, as well as a higher top speed. If the aircraft had this engine, it would mean that it could fly high enough to be out of range of any current anti-aircraft defenses, while offering a range considerably greater than of the SR-71, which required a massive tanker support fleet to use it in operation. This Aurora's mission profile would be mostly spying, used to bridge the gap between spy satellites and slower aircraft or drones. And speaking of drones, this aircraft would either be a completely autonomous aircraft or piloted by one or two pilots. It's a bit vague as we don't really know for sure and we also don't know how advanced computer technology for spy planes were back in the early 90s when this was built. Its skin, made of a special titanium material, would be composed of large panels to reduce the radar profile and to help with heat management flying at such a top speed. It could also have the ability to deploy weapon systems into enemy territory. Whilst these missiles wouldn't have been hypersonic, it would still allow the aircraft to pack a serious punch and get in and out before the enemy could react. So I bet at this point you're asking, gee Nick, this sounds great and all, but do you have any proof? More than you can imagine. By the late 1980s, many experts in the US believed that the government had the capability to develop a Mach 5 hypersonic aircraft. The SR-71 program was winding down, and in order to stay competitive on the world stage, it was essential that the US have a replacement. 
By the early 90s, only a few years later, there were multiple sightings of a specific fast, triangle-shaped aircraft that had a very odd-shaped contrail. One such sighting in 1989, an engineer in the North Sea witnessed a triangle aircraft refueling from a Boeing Stratotanker. The British government at the time, when it was investigating this report, was told by the US government that no such aircraft existed. Sonic booms were detected across Southern California from 1991 onwards that apparently didn't match any known aircraft, including the SR-71. The researchers picked them up on special earthquake sensors and were able to say that the aircraft flew early in the morning at 90,000 feet at Mach 4 to Mach 5. Then, by 1992, contrails matching the profile of the pulse wave detonation engine started to appear across the sky all over America, along with strange pulsating roars. During one of these events, radio transmissions were detected between a AWACS aircraft and two other unknown aircraft called Dark Star November and Dark Star Mike. Several of these communications mentioned an aircraft flying well above 67,000 feet at a speed truly unfathomable. And finally, we even have actual factual eyewitness accounts. An Area 51 enthusiast called Chuck Clack claims to have a videotape of the Aurora taking off. He says that one night at 2.30am after spending three days hiding in the mountains above Groom Lake in the middle of the desert, he witnessed the aircraft take off. He said it was 130 feet long and a sharp triangle shape, matching all the other descriptions that we've seen so far. And as for the tape that he apparently recorded, he said that it's locked away. It's a legitimate spy plane. My purpose is not to give away legitimate national defense. Until they get ready to unveil it, I'll probably release the tape. But by 1996, reports of the aircraft seem to vanish, and only small blips have appeared in 2000 in Scotland of strange radar readings, leaving us and the public to wonder, did any of these events ever take place? Not to rain on anyone's parade, but we should also talk about the counterpoints to the existence of this aircraft. We can start by talking about the name. Aurora actually comes from a leaked 1985 budget report as an allocation for $455 million for aircraft construction in the fiscal year of 1987. Whilst the details were blacked out, the name Aurora remained and fueled speculation of a new codename spy plane. Reported by Aviation Week, the budget would end up reaching $2.3 billion in fiscal year 1987 and result in the production of several of these black op planes. This, however, was confirmed by an ex Lockheed employee to be the B 2 stealth bomber aircraft program. That Aurora was the code name for the development of this special plane. But just because the name doesn't connect, does it mean that this plane doesn't exist? According to the US government themselves, the evidence supporting the Aurora is circumstantial or purely conjecture. There is little reason to contradict the government position. But others are not so convinced. One writer and Black Projects expert Bill Sweetman said, Does the Aurora exist? Years of pursuit have led me to believe that yes, Aurora is most likely in active development, spurred on by recent advancements that have allowed technology to catch up with the ambition that launched the program a generation ago. And we know that from the program of the SR-72. That hypersonic technology is now mature and is going to be used in future aircraft designs. But how would they know if this technology is mature if they didn't have a test aircraft to use it on? That expert Bill Sweetman has gone on to say that in 2006 there was a $9 billion budget black hole that has never been attributed to any existing Air Force program, including the B-2 bomber. Perhaps that's where our mystery Aurora spy plane is today. I'll leave it up to you in the comments, and if you watch this video and one day it's gone, along with my channel, then you know that perhaps I got a little bit too close to the truth. Special thanks to my Patreons who supported me and buy me coffee to keep working on videos just like this, and if you want to follow along, then I suggest you jump onto Patreon to see how you too can support me.
see videos early, and even suggest topics for me to do in future videos. I would love to keep talking, but there's someone knocking at my door. I'll be right back.